And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. If you didn't know, this is the only podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. Didn't even have my headphones on. I don't want to mess up my hair. I just literally just walked out of the shower uh, wearing these clothes. So there we go. That's why they're dry. I'm like Aquaman in that movie, Aquaman. Uh, not, not, in the, not in the cartoons, Aquaman, the movie Aquaman. Hey, welcome back to the Constitutional. I hate myself. Uh, like I said, it's the premiere. I, I think I said it was the only podcast for cbluscomedy.com. So far, we'll see. Whatever happens, the application happens. <laughs> no, I think it's gone. Uh, listen, I'm dressed up today. It's the early morning hours. Not early morning hours. It's late morning of uh, the day before this releases. I have uh, going to be on assignment. And, and actually, I should be on assignment right now. But I'm here. Chimney Christmas. They're just doing construction outside. And it is constructing up uh, uh, the noise. And uh, I got stuff to do. So it means I got to hop right to it. This is the application. You're listening to the only podcast on the internet that I host so far. So let's get right to it. I thought I could have sworn I had more stories. <laughs> I could have sworn. Let's get let's get in. I didn't want to do this, but uh, the Oscars happened, and uh, Green Book won. This is the 2019 Oscars. Green Book won for uh, best movie, best picture. Uh, which again, the Academy is made up of older white people, and they think this is uh, equality and diversity. I have no interest in seeing that movie. And if you're a person of color, you should not either. The, <laughs> uh, it was written by a bunch of uh, old white dudes. And uh, one of whom is a great director, but uh, just he's now has this movie on his back. The other of whom is uh, who wrote this movie is the son of who Viggo Morton's character is. And and he's just this overtly Italian guy who just stands up for uh, what he believes in, which is not an issue, but when it comes to something like this, it shouldn't. Uh, nobody's happy. Nobody should be happy about this. About this uh, stupid this this win. No one should be happy about this. It's not. It's not good. Good lord. <laughs> Very loud. No one should be happy about this. Um, but you know, other movies did win. Uh, you know, and you know, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I on low on my list of priority of winning uh, was Black Panther, and I would have accepted Black Panther over their the construction is very loud. I would have accepted Black Panther over Green Book, but Green Book. But first of all, neither of those movies should be in the final. In the final, but let's, let's just be honest about that. Don't vote for something just because you you think it should be there. Uh, I want to go. Why does CNET comes up? For, CNET the electronic. Technology site comes up first ahead of everything we type in 2019 Oscars ahead of Oscars.com <laughs> Oscars.go.com it comes up ahead of uh, a bunch of other sites and then like the verge is second. It's so strange to me Okay, so here we go uh, Rami Malek won for Bohemian Rhapsody. He was the best uh, Leading nominee. That's good. I'm glad I'm happy for him uh, a brown person won, even though he's Egyptian brown person won great um, Herschel Ali won his, his as well. Olivia Coleman won. Good for her. Regina King won. I'm happy for her. Even though she was only in the movie for, I don't, I would say 10 minutes. Like she had one scene in Cuba and then one scene at the beginning. I don't understand how she won. I don't even know why Amy Adams was nominated in the first place. <laughs> don't be so mean, Chad. Uh, but that, that's really the only issues I, I really had there. I really, everything else was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with Roma one, uh, free solo one. Uh, and that's only free solo is only a documentary right now. <laughs> uh, period of innocence one. I'm fine with everything else, uh, but this it just really bothered me that Green Book won. It should not have won. It's, it, it it doesn't even deserve. It's just like Hidden Figures and Hidden Figures, great movie. Uh, Green Book, we'll never see it. I don't care about it. <laughs> but these Lifetime films keep uh, keep getting this these this recognition. Either either these Lifetime style movies are uh, really good or really bad. Using quotes there if you're not watching the video. And uh, that's what I mean. That's that's just what happens. That's just what happens. And it sucks that uh, other movies like Black Klansman or uh, even though even though Black Klansman got the, its res- it got its got its result, uh, it didn't get the directing like like Spike Lee wanted and uh, or should have gotten rather. But um, you know, I'd even, I would have even accepted A Star Is Born <laughs> to win something. I want Bradley Cooper to have gotten that that uh, that Oscar. The Academy Award, like everybody was hoping he would. 
Next up, Dacis De- uh, and Mero, uh, had their Showtime show finally premiered after months and months and months of not being on television. Uh, and I don't think it was only like <laughs> three or four months, if that. Uh, if you don't know the story of Dacis and Mero, they're uh, two very funny, I guess I would call them comedians, two very funny comedians. And uh, they had a show on Viceland that was called Dacis and Mero. It was just them commenting on the news of the day. And it was uh, very much of the moment. I would I would venture as much to say like they didn't even have writers. And then they would and they would interview very famous people, like very famous people, like A listers. Uh, I don't know how sometimes they got. I think Kerry Washington might have been on episode. I don't know why that's the only person I can think of. But I don't know how they how Vice Land Vice Land the what H two turned into after Vice bought a TV channel and which is now delved into reruns of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and hipster movies being. Uh, uh, Stanley Cooper movies airing 24 uh, seven. It's, it's very, very odd how they landed these A-listers, but uh, Daisy Zemiro. Now they, they left vice because or vice land rather because they vice, they, they felt that vice was making them do uh, twice as much as work for not enough pay for not enough for like, they're just working them. They're just working them over time, which wouldn't make sense because that was the best show on the network. Um, so now they have a show on Showtime. They've been uh, touting it for a long time. They started putting out, uh, th- what's it called? Uh, clips on YouTube. They have a YouTube channel, which is like every other late night show, which is great. Like every late night show should have. I was thinking about this earlier today, this morning, actually, when I was on the way to the gym, I was thinking, hey, you guys didn't need to know that you guys know I work out every single day. I was, <laughs> I was thinking how before, uh, Letterman, before Letterman left, there was no late show on on YouTube when Craig Ferguson was hosting Late Late Show. There was no Late Late Show stuff on YouTube. Conan stuff you could you could barely find on YouTube unless it was like somebody's uh, uploading VCR recordings. Uh, Leno you couldn't find on YouTube. Like it was, I think, and I think Fallon really started that trend of uploading stuff to to YouTube, which was which is great. Uh, and I, you know, I, I would, I would say as much as, you know, it was Fallon, uh, who also another digression had a, I meant to watch this before I talked before I did this episode, but he, their fifth, the fifth anniversary of his show of his tonight show, uh, was, occurred this week. It was the birthday this week. <laughs> and he did an ode to Larry, to Larry Sanders show, Gary Shandling's, uh, series, the Larry Sanders show. <laughs> And that's one of my favorite shows of all time. And it is so cool that I did that. Uh, I've not watched it, but apparently like just one episode, I think it was Monday or Tuesday's episode was dedicated to the, like just, just to having an episode, an hour long episode of the Larry Sanders show essentially, but with Jimmy starring Jimmy Fallon. So I'm very excited to watch that. Uh, I can't wait to see it. Apparently De Niro and Ben Stiller and Tina Fey are all in there. So I'm very, I can't wait to watch that. Sit down and watch that. Uh, but back to Deces and Mero's Showtime show. Really great. The first person they had on was Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And uh, she talked about being from Brooklyn. And they, and they talked about her being this young person uh, in the government now and doing all these great things and having her voice heard. Uh, really inspiring. Really great. Uh, one of my issues with it's it's essentially the same exact show they were doing on Vice, Viceland, rather, and it is it's the same show, just more money, just more production value. If you watch the Vice, if you watch a clip from their Viceland show versus a clip from this show, you can see the the cameras a lot closer. They have uh, the same two chairs, not the same two chairs, not exactly because they had two different chairs on the. Uh, Viceland, you you know the difference. Uh, there's they have like uh, liquor bottles next to them, drinks. Uh, I think, I think Miro had a uh, had a forty next to him. I don't know. It was really weird. Uh, so they have these drinks that they can drink from. They the, and, and now there's an audience, which is really really prevalent. Uh, one of my biggest issues with late night shows is that they they uh, they audiences just clap over everything and it is the worst i hate it i hate applause breaks we don't need them in comedy anymore we're done i hate applause breaks uh but they have this they have a crowd a uh, very emphatic crowd too <laughs> jesus and then uh and then they and then they go well you know they do they do like the rundown um they have a bunch of other things that they that they hit like stories for the for the week now since they only do it once a week it's on Thursday nights at eleven I think and then they go over and talk to the person to the interviewee for 
what is it, uh, like six, seven minutes, which is, and it, I mean, it's great. I, w- I really wish they had a little bit more time. And since you're on Showtime, I mean, you can you can screw with the time schedule all over the place, right? Can't you? Like, couldn't you, wouldn't it be like uh, last week tonight? They, like, periodically, they have episodes all the time that are 28 minutes long. Like, if you just need something to go over, just go over. Uh, Hassan Minaj's show on Netflix, that, that one's regularly almost half an hour, you know? Uh, close half an hour and rather than 22 minutes, the traditional 22 minutes. Uh, and you know, this, and this, this new, this show, Desus and Mero show suffers from the same thing that Conan's show suffers from, even though Conan's is uh, nightly and then their show is weekly. The editing is while it's tight, it's really jarring sometimes. <laughs> and it's only been one episode of Desus and Mero, but for, for Conan, like you can tell where they cut, where they cut some laughs or where they cut a question out when he's interviewing somebody, uh, for Desus and Mero, same thing. You can see where they cut around some jokes that probably didn't land or that were too, uh, sketchy for television. Uh, speaking of sketch sketches, they have sketches, in the show, which is, I would say, unnecessary. <laughs> I get it. They're doing this whole late night thing. They don't need sketches. Daisy and Mero don't need sketches. All right. And it, was, it was a green book, a uh, playoff of green book, uh, where one of them was playing the white guy and the other one was playing the black guy. And, uh, and it, it was, but it was green book, but with basically two black guys, but one was pretending to be white. It was, it was fine. It's not the best. We don't need sketches. Just do what you do best and get in there, talk about the news, uh, uh, make fun of the news, and then talk to somebody. That's what they did best. And that's why the Viceland show was, was so popular was because they were just doing this. Uh, and they don't, need, they, don't need to, they don't need to be what Conan is. They don't need to be what Jimmy Fallon is. They don't need to be what uh, uh, Colbert is. They just need to be themselves. And I understand that they have writers and they have this writer's room up there. And, and uh, is it in Brooklyn? I think they shoot in Brooklyn. Where are they from? Uh, <laughs> I don't know where those guys are from. It's, I want to say Yonkers. <laughs> Desus and Miro home. I want to type in home because I think that would be easiest. Uh, I don't know where they're from. Where are Desus and Miro from? Maybe we can, maybe we can ask Google. Where are Desus and Miro from? <laughs> I want to say they're from the United States of America. Thank you, Google. <laughs> I very much appreciate that. Uh, the kid Miro's from the, from the Dominican Republic, I believe Bronx, the Bronx, that Jesus, how come I couldn't remember that word? I was, I feel so stupid. I, I knew it was a B and I knew it wasn't Brooklyn. I was like, what is it? And it's not Yonkers. Cause that's the only other neighborhood I know. <laughs> Uh, but the Showtime show is great. Check it out. They have a YouTube channel where you can where they upload everything, uh, and they the upload schedule is very strange because they upload like a bunch of clips from the episode on like the night the night after or the day after like a regular uh, uh, show would. But then on Sunday they put out the rest, or Sunday or Monday they put out the rest, like as if, as if they want to get you in. <laughs> like hey, you gotta watch the show. Here's how you get it. Um, it's great. I think it's great. Check it out. I think I had a really good time. I think I had a really good time. With it. No, I had a really good time with it. I can't wait to see who else they get. Uh, like Hassan Minaj's show. I think it's, you know, I hate to pit them, pit them against each other, but but they're the two most recent ones. Hassan Minaj's show and this one, and Daces and Miro's. This is better than uh, Hassan's. Uh, my issue with Hassan's is that he's a little too, he needs to rein it in because it seems very fake because he wasn't like this on The Daily Show. <laughs> And uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that. I love Hassan. I think he's a very funny and smart and handsome and well-dressed man. Uh, very handsome. But <laughs> I don't. I. I but one of my issues with his, with his show is that he uh, gets he gets excitable and he uses he uses every part of his body to talk and he opens his eyes and and uh, and it's it's a little it's distracting and it takes away from the story and he forces he forces one of the issues is he forces the joke which is uh which can be a little troublesome especially for for a show like his okay halfway through the episode let's take a break i'm gonna check on this camera in front of me i don't think it's recording anymore. <laughs> and uh we come back we got two more things and then i gotta go all right <laughs> And welcome back to this. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm trying to have this clock on. <laughs> it's embarrassing. 
<laughs> I tried to have I tried to have a stopwatch on because I forgot to do it for the first half of this show. And now we're back. Welcome back to this is a break. Okay. Uh, if <laughs> if you wonder what I did on that break, which is nothing. I just stood up, I got some water, checked the camera, it stopped recording. Uh, the first, the second time I tried to start it up again for this uh, second half of the show, and uh, I had to check on a message for a potential uh, interview for uh, for a very. Oh, so let's talk about what I'm doing. <laughs> let's talk about what I'm doing. Uh, next week I will hopefully put out a, a very uh, serious news video for a website that is not mine for a different website, and it is about uh, racism at a local college. And I will, and I'm I'm just trying to set up interviews for that. And I'm trying to go up there right now, which is why I'm in such a hurry. Why I'm speaking so fast? Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. I beat a lot of games this week. I beat <laughs> a lot of games. Actually, no, last week that I uh, that I just had that I needed to get deleted from my Xbox. <laughs> I was I was I, I Red Dead Redemption Two was 111 gigabytes, uh, just taking up a lot of storage, and so I was in. So I was I was at like 88 percent. And I started so, and I have I have an expandable storage too on both the Xbox and the PS4. But I and so I've been trying to work on games for both consoles so I can start deleting things because I'm just like digital hoarding. That's what happens when you you get rid of your regular stuff. Like if you don't want to, if you don't want to, uh, like have a bunch of stuff, you're like, ah, I guess I'll just buy movies and games digitally. And then it turns out you're dig- you're hoarding stuff instead of hoarding physical stuff, you're hoarding digital stuff. Even though I, I sold a bunch of games and I, I sold a bunch of DVDs and I gave away a bunch of books, I still have a bunch of things that are digital. <laughs> and so now I'm just trying not to do that too, <laughs> which is, which is, I mean, it's, it's something that I'd be cognizant of. Uh, so I just beat, I beat Batman Arkham origins, which apparently I bought four or five years ago and I got, let's say, maybe two thirds of a weight, like eighty percent through, and then, and then I just stopped playing in twenty sixteen. Like, like if you look at the achievements, it's very sporadic. It's like unlocked achievement in two thousand fourteen, unlocked achievement twenty fifteen, unlocked like seven achievements in twenty sixteen, and then nothing. And then I was, and then I looked at, I, I, was, I went in my, clo- I have all my games, uh, all the three sixty games. Uh, it's somewhere in my closet. I looked at them and I was like, I got to get rid of some of this stuff. Started playing Arkham Origins uh, again. And I remember I just fought Dead Finger. No, what's his name? Slade. Uh, Slade's name is Deadshot. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, boy. <laughs> I just fought him for like the th- second or third time. It was, I think it was like this, it was like in a big arena type thing. And he, and I just did that. And, and then, uh, and then I remember, I don't know, I think I was going after the Joker or something like that. Spoiler alert, that Joker's in the uh, prequel game to a game that came out seven years ago. Uh, and then Joker, so when I was going after the Joker, and then I stopped playing it for some reason. And I finally knocked that out. And Mass Effect 3, which is, uh, I, I, I'd previously beaten Mass Effect 3, but it is the only, that is the only series I have all of the DLC in. I've never bought DLC for a video game. Uh, like all of it. I've never, <laughs> I've never, I've never went like, ah, oh, I'll just buy uh, uh, all this DLC. No, I bought all the DLC for, for Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. And then I played the mess out of it. And then I stopped playing it. <laughs> and uh, same thing for that one. There's like, there's like three years of non-achievements in that. And uh, so I, so I just finished it off and uh, Shepard, my Shepard had a party, Chad Shepard, of course, my, <laughs> my Shepard had a party. <laughs> and all everybody who survived, all my teammates, my squad mates that came and we danced and everybody uh, got blitzed and uh, zooted. And then they <laughs> they spent the night in my apartment and now they're gone. I got the achievement and uh, deleted it from my Xbox. <laughs> Great series. One of my favorite game series of all time. Uh, it's amazing how, and I swear I'll get back to the comedy at some point. <laughs> I, I think it's amazing how uh, they, how, how that, how that game series evolved. Like it used to be purely RPG. That was, it was like an RPG sci-fi shooter. That was mostly RPG. Then in the second game, it was mostly shooter and less RPG. And now in this third game, it was okay. We will give you both. Uh, if you want to hear a story, you'll get a story. If you want to just play, you'll play. Uh, if you, if you don't care about anything, just do whatever. And then, and then you can auto level and all that stuff. And your squ- you don't have to choose your squad mate. It's, it's amazing. And like the movement, the mobility is a lot better than the first two. Cause Jesus, Oh my God. If they remake those games for the current gen system or even the next gen platforms, I would love for them to rework the movement for all games. Because in Mass Effect 1, God almighty, it was like controlling a tank. And Mass Effect 2, 
it was like controlling a tank. Mass Effect 3, it's like controlling a tank that can climb over things. <laughs> so, very excited for those, uh, for to have those games done. Now I'm working, still working through God of War and uh, Red Dead 2. So, that's my life right now. And then, you know, some other things. <laughs> so, some other smaller games. That don't, well, the last two Tomb Raiders, <laughs> I'm still trying to beat those, but I'm just so sick of killing people. Uh, and then he said he was playing Red Dead 2 <laughs> and God of War. Uh, here we go. This is a very different story. I want I want to cover it. Uh, Apple COO. This is from Apple Insider. Apple COO Jeff Williams is uh, quotes aware of iPhone Mac price concerns. <laughs> this is by Andrew O'Hara from Apple Insider. Like I said, so uh, Apple they release new phones. Um, the only one, the one that's selling the best. This is uh, several months ago. The only one that's selling the best is the iPhone SE. Which I or XE, XRE is that XRS? I don't know. Who, whichever this the smaller, cheaper version of the XR. Um, I think that's what it's called, XR. I don't know, I'm not gonna check. So, <laughs> so Apple's uh, one of those. Uh, if you look at sales, that one's selling the best, the cheapest one. Uh, iPhone SE is from like ten years ago, I think. <laughs> Who cares, Chad? Shut up. So, that one's selling the best, right? Now, uh, iPhone sales are dwindling. Uh, Apple had to reverse a policy where they were intentionally throttling phones uh, for perform for battery performance, or throttling battery for phone performance, or and vice versa. And now they make they they allow you to choose whichever if you want performance or if you want battery uh, with a setting inside of iOS. Uh, which is something that we'd been theorizing for years because every time a new iPhone would come out or a new, or in, in this case, a new Pixel or a new Samsung phone would come out, we, uh, everybody's like, yeah, my phone's a little bit slower. And, uh, which is, I think, it's, I think it's a true thing for every phone maker. And now just, we just have to wait for Google and Samsung to admit, like, yeah, we are doing this. We are throttling. Uh, I don't know if throttling is the right word. I know you use that for data. So anyway. Uh, so now they're losing. Well, Android's gaining a giant, or or more of a foothold, or like Sam, other other phone companies are gaining more of a foothold. Uh, so okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, my phone's vibrating, uh, getting text messages. So I guess that's what happens. You know, so I'm a busy boy. You know, just getting in there, getting text messages. <laughs> Shut up, chat. Uh, so. <laughs> Samsung announced a new uh, again. Samsung announced a new uh, their their new tens uh, S tens or whatever iPhone Samsung ten SEs and all that junk jazz uh, last week. Apple and and they had a foldable phone, all these great things. Uh, but now they have. But now Apple's coming out and they're trying to do a little bit better than they have, than they have been doing previously. But how long was that? Was that seven minutes? <laughs> it was eight minutes. Here's the first story. <laughs> Um, Friday, February 22nd, Jeff Williams, uh, went to Elon, uh, university. It's not owned by Elon Musk where he talked about Apple's incredible growth since he joined two decades ago. There was a Q and a portion and a student, uh, cited a recent report that claims an iPhone only costs $350 to ma- manufacture, which is, I mean, we've known that for years. We, we beats headphones. They, they cost like a uh, hundred or, you know, a certain amount of money, like cheaper than what you're spending on. They cost like 10 bucks to, to make, uh, iPhones cost three fifty. Uh, I'm every, every electronic thing in the world, watch shark tank. Things cost significantly cheaper to make than to sell. And uh, you're what you're doing for Beats, what you're doing for iPhone, what you're doing for even Lenovo, Lenovo's uh, products. You are you are paying for the name. It, I, I understand. I, I get it. You don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a phone. Don't. Th- there's other options. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, this is from Williams. The stories that come about uh, come out come out about the cost of our products have been the bane of my existence from the beginning of time, including our early days. Analysts don't really understand the cost of what we do and how much we how much care we put into making our products. Well, <laughs> the Times News, who 
I'd be a horrible newscaster if I had to read a quote. I was like, oh, I disagree with that. <laughs> but like, anyway, uh, the, the kid who was found, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, the Times News, who covered the speech, describes the lengths Apple has gone uh, to for its products development, citing the Apple Watch as an example. Instead of just mimicking fitness trackers that existed prior to Apple's wearable, the company built an entire uh, psychology, psychology, physiology. <laughs> Physiology lab with 40 licensed nurses and enlisted the help of 10,000 participants to further study how calories are burned in various fitness exercises. Williams did admit that he understands the concern of Apple's rising price points, which has been especially noticeable in the iPhone models that now sell for well over $1,000. It's something we're very aware of, Williams said. We do not want to be an elitist company, kind of are. That's not, that's not. We want to be an uh, egalitarian company, and we've got a lot of work going on in developing markets, uh, which is, you know, uh, Android has uh, has a um, has Android one, which I believe is a stripped down version of what Android phones are. They'll come out with a with an Android phone over there, like a Google Pixel Lite. Uh, which might have just passed through FCC, which is the only reason I'm thinking about that. But there'll be like a cheap film, like a Motorola of, of P. <laughs> It'll come out over there. You can't get it in America, in India. You, I mean, it, sorry, you can't get it in America. It'll come out in India. Over there was, was a, India was a subject of that sentence. <laughs> It comes out over there. You can't get it. It runs on Android One Lite, which is a lightweight version of Android One, of Android of operating system, and it's and it and it only do, and you you know it, it runs better for three G, uh, you know companies uh, companies countries with only three G. I'm not doing a great job of explaining it. Just know that developing and developing markets, which we don't call we can't we can't say third world anymore. I learned that last week. Cannot say third world. Let's say developing markets. In developing markets. Uh, these these lighter weight uh, OSs and, and devices are better for them because that's how it works. Uh, so it's good that they to know that they they that they that they do have a market over there in developing uh, nations, but uh, over here in America they are. I know he says they don't want to be a leadist company, but it's, it kind of it's kind of coming off that way. Uh, when whenever you know you have a phone, and I get it, you don't. And I've said this before, you don't have to buy an iPhone, you don't have to buy any of these products. And you are paying for the name, but when something reaches a thousand dollars, it doesn't have a headphone jack. Uh, it in a year it'll be slower. The battery will work uh, worse. Uh, it's uh, not all apps work with every single phone, and that's why people are sticking with their their older iPhones. You know, because now it's now it's easier to. Uh, now that now, you know, Apple adds in that switch for, if you want to throttle your performance, uh, for better battery, or if you want to, uh, crap your battery out for better performance, uh, now people are just thinking, oh, well maybe I'll just stick with this old iPhone X from 2017, uh, for another year versus for, for three years rather than, you know, trading up again the next year for iPhone XP. I don't know why. I don't know if I made any type of sense with that. But it's good to know that they're paying attention. Let's move on. This is an article I barely had time to read. This is from The Atlantic, Juliana Goldman. It's almost impossible to be a mom in television news. I don't know why I read it like that. (laughs) For female television reporters, the decision to have kids can be a career ending one. Okay, so when I was at WXIA... There was eleven eleven news in Atlanta. There was NBC News in Atlanta. There was <laughs> there was a uh, there were a, a a few people who had a few reporters and anchors who had children. Uh, I've done I've done I've interviewed them uh, for a video I put out, uh, which I think it's called Baby Reporters. So definitely check that out. I know it's still on the website because I have links to everything I've ever done. Check it out, Baby Report. In fact, I might even link it in here. Baby Reporters, great. Uh, and I talked to three uh, reporters and anchors who were who had children relatively le- recently within the same uh, span. Like they were gone, like they they were gone for months. Uh, and one of them, I think, even got pregnant twice within that year. So, or twice within that year. I mean, she was pregnant and she had the baby, and then you know she got pregnant again. <laughs> so, uh, but that's neither here nor there. None of my business. So these, so, uh, but what, but what happens is, uh, when you're a reporter, you are under contract 
And, you know, for some, for a lot of companies, you know, you do get the paid leave, like the, for, for some companies, I think it's like six weeks for some other companies, it's three months. I think for Turner, it's, uh, which is CNN, uh, I believe they, I think they get, they get paid time off, but I don't know how much, I think it's a long time. Uh, cause it's, cause it's, it was voted one of the best companies to be a working parent or something like that. Um, Okay, but this but this uh, reporter was talking about that she spent a lot of time away from her children, and uh, she was uh, she was in this news business for a very long time, I think like fifteen years, and uh, she this is very important. Uh, yet during negotiations, I was basically told I wasn't quotes there yet, and I should have been happy that I had been offered a new contract at all. And this is somebody who's like, and for a reporter, you spend a lot of time away from your kids. I know I, I worked with uh, one anchor uh, before I left uh, NBC. Was she? She said like that was her first Christmas, and she was like maybe forty, and she had like I think like three or four kids. I don't know. I don't know on their age. I should not have said her age. That was very that was very mean of me. Very rude. She's a very nice person. Uh, but she had a, she had like three or four kids, and she's like, yeah, this is like she's a she's like uh, like I think it was like around Christmas or something like that. She goes. Or, or Thanksgiving, she goes, uh, she says something along the lines of, yeah, I just, I remember, I can't remember the last time I didn't work on Christmas or Thanksgiving or something like that. And I was like, whoa, like on holiday, I was like, whoa, that's, that's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, I know I get, I get that, you know, people have to pay their dues and, and work. <laughs> those little bunny years I gave, uh, pay their dues and work and, uh, do these things. But, uh, you know, if people have, if people should be able to trade off and, and it shouldn't it shouldn't be caustic to your career if you want to spend one New Year's with your uh, family, uh, or one Christmas, or or one one holiday with your family. Uh, according to a report by the Women's Media Center, television viewers are less likely to see women reporting, and this is this is female based, uh, see women reporting the news today rather than just a few years ago. At the big three networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC combined, men were responsible for, for reporting 75% of the evening news broadcast over the three months in 2016, while women were responsible for reporting only 25%, a drop from 32% two years earlier. What could be contributing to this? Studies show that once a woman becomes a mother, she is less like she is likely to earn less. While once men become fathers, they tend to earn more in what is known as the fatherhood premium. When prospective uh, prospect, prospective employers, excuse me, look at a resume and see signs that a woman is a mother, she's less likely to be offered a job. Bias sweeps into work uh, seeps into workplace evaluations as well. And uh, TV news is that, and <clears throat> and then some for working moms. Uh, she says, I know that in my experience with CBS was not an outlier, and the 13 moms I spoke with who work or used to work in TV news as correspondents, anchors, and producers found much the same. Uh, the uh, the next quote here says, it's, uh, broadcast world is highly competitive, and it's very true. Uh, in the broadcast landscape, if, you, if you're chasing after, you have, for, you, typically you have uh, four broadcasters uh, going after the same story. If there's a, if there's a, a, a fire at an apartment complex in, uh, in Decatur, you better believe that CBS, ABC, NBC, and Fox are all going to be rushing their satellite trucks down there to broadcast live at 5 p.m. to, uh, to talk about the fire. Uh, and then you all, and, and this is what I did. You all had to go talk to the PIO, which is the, uh, God, I don't know what the PIO stands for anymore. I've been out of the news for so long. You all go talk to the PIO, and that person uh, gives you. Ooh, I'm <laughs> that person uh, is supposed to give you the information, and 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 you know essentially that's what it is. Uh, and and you have to you have to get the details for yourself, even if. Uh, ABC reported it first. Fox, CBS, and NBC. If they're, if the, uh, in particular, if they're, if the, uh, not, not not news directors. If you're, if, if who are, the producers. If the producers are, uh, uh, <laughs> I want to curse, but I can't. If they're jerks, <laughs> then they're gonna make you get the same, the same, the same like minutia. Even if it's just like it was, uh, it was a, a piece of paper that started the fire. Then they will make you get that. <laughs> from the PIO and they'll and from you have to and confirm it for yourself even if you heard it through the grapevine through WSB or uh, ABC I shouldn't be going with the station names here nobody knows 
because I have so many listeners all across the nation of this great, great, great nation of this land. Uh, in ABC's Washington Bureau, Bureau, not a single female correspondent is a mother. And I know two people that have that work with NBC's Washington Bureau, and I know they're not mothers because they're close to my age. But still, they could be a mother anytime. Oh, I was going to say something very disgusting, but I'm not going to. The most recent was Nora O'Donnell, who left in 2011 for CBS News, where she now is a co-host of CBS This Morning. And I got to tell you, I made I did a story about CBS about the uh, morning news shows. Uh, and I've really, I've been watching CBS this morning. I like clips, I'm like not, not watching it live, but I've been watching clips, uh, way better than GMA and way better than today. And I could take that to the bank. <laughs> uh, there's an unease among young women correspondents in the NBC Washington bureau who would like to become moms someday said a producer there who, uh, who asked not to be identified. I thought I was about to identify this person. <laughs> I was like, I don't care. Uh, no one wants to be a test case because it hasn't been a common concern and people are so committed to their jobs. They're worried about not being able to juggle it all. And it's true. Uh, when, whenever you're a mom, uh, like, especially in a corporate world, if you go out, if you leave your job for a couple of weeks, uh, then like even for a vacation, uh, even for sick days, you feel like you're not going to be able to catch up on work. And that's, and you know, you, I've seen studies, you, you've seen the study, you've seen the stats where people, they, they leave uh, work for a little bit and they come back and then they, they feel like they'd never be able to catch up. And that's why people are workaholics sometimes. That camera just shut off. It scared me. <laughs> I did this and it shut off. I was like, oh, <laughs> it all happened. It all happened in a, in a, in a quick uh, succession of time. Uh, but it, it, I mean, it really, it really, uh, blows that we treat women like this. Uh, you know, um, you know, it's good that the period won the best short <laughs> so that people can see that periods aren't bad. <laughs> periods are good. <laughs> Title of the episode. <laughs> All right. Uh, so listen, check out this article. Like I said, it's great. It's an older article from 2018, but I think it's very interesting and it does paint a picture of what it's like to work in the news and to be a mom. And, uh, I didn't even, I didn't cover all the things I wanted to cover, but definitely check it out. Listen, if you like what you heard here, why don't you head on over to the website, sleeplesscomedy.com where there's interviews is where the show lives. You can see a video version of this show living right there. Uh, over on uh, cpluscomedy.com. And you'll also find it on youtube.com slash cpluscomedy, where you can see our premiere show, News Time, which is a great show that I do every week. Uh, it's This week's episode is about... Um, it's a weekly news show. Okay, I'll do this. It's a weekly news show. It's like The Daily Show, less funny. It's like Full Frontal, Samantha B, less funny. Last week tonight, way less funny. Uh... <laughs> It's like Daisy and Mero, super less funny. <laughs> it's like Conan, I should just not be doing this. <laughs> it's like Johnny Carson show, and it's uh, I, why am I even alive? <laughs> Check it out. News time. This week's episode is about uh, last year at the Oscars. Francis McDormand said uh, mentioned the inclusion writer, and then I did an episode about the inclusion writer. Uh, this year's, this week's episode of news time, excuse me, is about the inclusion writer and where it stands right now. Let me tell you, as many of those white people were clapping at the award shows, none of them have done anything. So <laughs> I just ruined the story for you. Uh, but one person is doing something. Michael B. Jordan, Ava DuVernay is also doing something, but Michael B. Jordan is the highest profile right now doing something. So definitely check it out. We'll see what he's doing. You'll have to watch news time to find out. I'm screaming because I'm the only one here. I'm very happy I get to record in the studio again. <laughs> it was a surprise to me. That's why I do it so early in the morning. It's only like 10 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock. I actually need to leave. Uh, hey, listen. <laughs> Let's see what else. Uh, follow us on. So you can find that on YouTube.com slash C plus comedy. Follow us on Twitter at C plus comedy. Uh, Instagram too at C plus comedy. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chad Black White. Like us on Facebook. Uh, okay, that's it. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> All right, bye. I, lo- I, I think you're the best. I gotta stop saying I love you. <laughs>